All right, we'll talk more about this in just a bit. Brian Cashman is with the team in Buffalo. Earlier today, he addressed the media, and Meredith Morakovitz had the chance to go one-on-one -on -one with the Yankees general manager. That is the focus of our clubhouse report presented by your local Ford stores. Thanks, Bob. Brian, you guys are now 65 games into the season. You're nine games back in the division, just a game above 500. How do you assess what's been happening with this team? Matt, it's uh, obviously frustrating. We are, you know, nowhere near where we need to be. Uh, so the only thing I'm thankful for is we have, you know, enough season left to self-correct. But uh, but if, if this is a horse race, we're starting in a, in a much worse pole position than than you want and uh, but we're gonna have to make up the ground for it we do have the talent we just got to tap into it and I think clearly I'm gonna have to do some uh, roster adjustments along the way if I can run into some things you know certainly as always Hal Steinbrenner and his family's charged us to find a way to, to fix what, what ails us and so uh, you know we'll be certainly looking out there and we started that process already you mentioned roster adjustments what do you look at as the biggest need right now no well, clearly the offense has been a, a real struggle you're always gonna try to address your pitching whenever you possibly can but uh, but the offense has been a real obviously surprise this year it was not supposed to be anything but a strength and it's been everything but a strength and so uh, trying to find a way to, to you know bring something else into this environment that will help uh, revitalize it you know that's certainly uh, our intent when you look at that offense is it the approach that needs to change the general philosophy that needs to change why do you think they have struggled so mightily with some of the talent that you have yeah I don't I mean uh, I think ultimately uh, you know, I'll just stay general on it I, I don't think it's necessarily approach driven but for some reason clearly we're hitting in a lot of ground balls this year I don't understand how and why that's occurred you know what people are doing to us to to create that is it's certainly bad luck but it's just gone through so long so much so it's odd we've got uh, we've got the almost the same crew that's usually an offensive juggernaut and it's been everything but that uh, but we still lead the league league and most balls impacted 100 miles an hour we got the most outs 100 miles an hour but we also have we're generating the most ground balls we're not getting the ball in the air enough um, we're certainly making mistakes in the base pass so between the ground granting the double plays and running into outs it's it's diminishing what already is an underperforming offensive team so um, but you know, I'm confident in the players that we have and the staff we've got uh, but the results just haven't followed so but nobody wants to hear that. All they want to hear is, is uh, you know, that success story at the end and the, and, uh, and the winning that comes with it. And so we got to find a way to get that back on track. You mentioned mistakes on the base pass. 31 outs on the bases this season. That's the most in the majors. What do you attribute that to? And who's ultimately responsible for those mistakes that are happening? Well, I attribute to pressing. Um, it's the same play. You know, listen, these players have played this game for a long, long time. And last year, the same crew uh, was some of the we ranked as the fewest, one of the fewest, not the fewest, but one of the fewest outs made on the bases. And this year, the same crew comes back as the most uh, and by a lot. And uh, I think it's attributed to the fact that we're playing. We're playing all these one-run ball games, and there's desperation that you've got to find a way to. All right, I'm on second base. I've got to score on this to tie this game, or, or if I score this, I, you know, we're going to win this game. And, and all of a sudden, you know, you, you just get out of your element and, and, uh, and you get in your own way. And I think we've had, you know, we're guilty of a little bit of that, without a doubt, or too much of that. And so, uh, just relax and play. And I know it's easy, but listen, these guys care so much, and when you get wrapped into that. Uh, scenario of trying to you know have the success that you're expected to have and you're not having it you can get in your own way sometimes and I think that's happened more than a few times this year so far. you were asked about Aaron Boone and the coaching staff earlier and some of the scrutiny surrounding them you said we are all in this together what makes you believe that the coaching staff is the right group to get this team back on track because they've been there before I mean we've had a lot of success with these players with the with this staff and uh, listen you know the team you know, I'm, I'm responsible, you know, in the top end, and I'll speak from the general manager's chair because I have people above me that are obviously more powerful than I am, so I can't speak on their behalf, but I can speak from my behalf. We're in this thing together. Uh, we all felt good about uh, the roster. We've we've seen it excel, uh, you know, under, you know, the guidance of these play, these this manager and these coaches. Um, and uh, But right now in this time frame of April, May, and the, and the beginning of June, you know, it's underperformed. And uh, so we're in this together. We're going to fix it together. And uh, that's that's the message I've got. You know, I know uh, and, and no one cares 
they just want it fixed now. And so that's ultimately I, all I can tell you is behind the scenes, there's been a lot of hard conversations with players, with staff, uh, with ownership. And uh, but again, the only thing that's going to matter is putting those W's up. Nothing else is going to matter. And that's what people care about. Do you feel like there's a sense of urgency in that clubhouse? Yeah, I do. And I, I, mean, I am starting to see um, I'm starting to definitely see some good signs from certain players that uh, that were part of maybe the problem of below average performance for them. And now they're coming out of it, it looks like. So so hopefully we can get more of that, uh, uh, you know, from the group, because ultimately it's going to take the entire roster to do what they're capable of. And so far that this roster got us here. But most of this roster, I won't say all of it, but most of this roster is going to get us out of here. Major League Baseball sent out a memo today and how they intend on enforcing pitchers using sticky substances the rest of this season. What did you think of that memo and how do you think that could affect your, your pitching staff? Uh, well, I mean, obviously it's been a topic that's been talked about for quite some time now. You know, Major League Baseball uh, sent the bat signal earlier in the year, uh, I think in the winter time as the approach spring training, that this was going to be an issue and it was going to be addressed. Uh, they took time for from March, April, May uh, to study, you know, a lot of different things. And they came up with some conclusions that they certainly didn't like. And so there's been a rule on the books for quite some time that has not been enforced uh, for generations on gen generations. Uh, but because of the evolution of the development of pitching and uh, and how you know, certain substances could really enhance their abilities to, to you know, navigate hitters and offenses. Uh, uh, you know, MLB is clearly trying to find higher ground to create an even playing field for both offense and defense. And so, uh, this memorandum is obviously a, a manifestation of that, and and a, and a clear warning sign to everybody involved that enough's enough. And uh, this rule now that's been on the books for forever is now going to be enforced in its entirety. So things that people are used to. Uh, having like pine tar, for instance, with the ability to just get a grip is no longer going to be in play. But, you know, that'll eradicate anything above and beyond, which is things like spider tech and other stuff like that. That's increased spin rates that has just decimated offenses. So um, we'll see, you know, obviously we're all going to be playing the same rules. So however it's going to affect, you know, our pitching versus other people's pitching, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, it's all designed to, to, to protect the game. What do you do as an organization to make sure that you guys are not only educated, but that it's not happening in that clubhouse? Oh, everybody's educated. Trust me. You know, that message has been sent. You know, it's been sent from, you know, clearly from the highest level, which is Major League Baseball's the commissioner's office. Uh, it's been sent through the union to the players. So the players have gotten it through their union. They've gotten it through you know the the clubs so from the Yankees general manager to the manager to the pitching coaches etc all throughout the entire organization so all the way down through player development and stuff so that's going on throughout the game the message has been heard it's clear it's direct and uh, it will be enforced and Aaron Boone said today Luis Severino about a month long setback just how big of a blow is that and do you expect him to definitely be back this season and back in that rotation it's definitely a setback I mean you're looking you know I, I, anywhere from four to six weeks you know I always like you know give a worst case scenario but before he's you know clearly back is a legitimate choice for us so uh, but it was a definite blow an unexpected circumstance uh, and uh, you know he's you know, one healthy people forget how good he really is. I mean, he's he's a uh, you know, he would fit really nicely, obviously, at uh, one point in the future behind a Garrett Cole, for instance. And I look forward to that day coming. And anything new with Corey Kluber? Uh, he's in his he's currently in his flat ground uh, flat ground throwing program, uh, which will start. It starts at 60 feet, then they extend it to 75 feet, then to 90 feet. So he's he's in the beginning of his flat flat ground throwing program and currently without issue, which is good so far. Brian, thank you so much for the time. Thanks for having me, Meredith. Bob, we'll send it back to you in the studio.